All right, today we're cutting just Jaime. What kind of haircut you want, bro? Let's see. Get that little mid drop fade. Mid drop. Keep a little weight on it, hard part. Trim the top just a little bit because my, wave, my wavy, wavy curls are coming out. And I don't like that. And do you want it to comb back like that, so? Yeah, just comb over a little comb back. All right, and, but trim the side, trim the top though? Yeah. All right, and then the beard. The beard, just fade it up. and Keep it as thick as possible. Keep it as thick. I like it though. It's coming out pretty straggly. Got some color enhancement? Yeah. You're in the edge bless, up? Bless you, me. You get the edge up on the, on the front porch? Get the edge up. All right, the good stuff. Let's take care of just Jaime. He's about to get just a haircut. <laughs> just a haircut. This is the 360, no Jeezy. Boom. Look, I just flipped the switch. What's good everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, turn on your post notifications to get any notifications of any future videos that we do on this channel. But let's get straight to the haircut tutorial. As you can tell by the client consultation, we will be doing a comb over fade with some beard work and a hard part. So that's the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and get to is gonna be creating that rough draft of the hard part. So I'm using that corner of the blade just to make a first pass through. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use that comb to separate the hair and get in there and get those uh, those little hairs knocked out on the top line. And then we're gonna go ahead and pass through and knock out the, uh, the bottom line and make sure we sharpen up all the edges, keep it crispy. So you can see here, I flip over the Andis Slimline GTXs and I'm knocking away at little hairs that I see and making sure that we got a good, clean, surgical cut, a good, clean, surgical hard part for my client. Now, once that's uh, laid in there, I will be getting to the fade portion after we knock out this uh, this hard part right here. And this is gonna be the, the rough draft basically. I will go over it with the razor later on in the video. Um, but as you can see there, I got the 245 power clip on them Slimline GTXs. The clipper of choice for this fade and for every fade that I do is gonna be the JRL 2020F clippers. And that's what we're using right here to lay down our initial bald line. So these JRLs are already zero gap, so I got them very close. So my GTX slim lines will fade into this later on when I clean up around the ear. But once we lay down our bald line, we will go ahead and open that lever up and create our first panel of hair to fade into. Now you can see me constantly using that comb to brush the hair down and make sure that we get all the hair fed into the teeth. You know, you wanna make sure you're going against the grain, creating these, these guidelines and fading up because the only way that you're gonna get a good crisp blend is if you make sure that you are going against the grain. And that goes with any texture of hair, that goes with coarse hair, fine hair, black hair, brown hair, curly hair, what have you. Now, after we get this panel laid in there, we're gonna go ahead and close the lever, flick into that, uh, that panel that we created, open the lever slightly, flick out, and fade up into that uh, that panel of hair that we already created. I'm just gonna repeat this process until we get that that uh, lever all the way open. Now, once we get that lever all the way open, we will uh, do a little clipper over the comb to clear out some of that bulk area. And I'm not gonna lie, this uh, this client's texture of hair was a little bit difficult. It uh, grows more dense in some areas than you know some of the other areas around his head. So, and you want to make sure that you're just paying attention to your clients. Uh, texture of hair and uh, find out the best way to attack it. So right here I got the clip over comb knocking down some bulk before we get to the rest of the fade. Now uh, we will be using the GTXs to clean up the bottom around the ear uh, later on and we will be using the uh, Andes shaver to flick into that uh, Andes GTX later on as well. But once we got the bulk all cleaned out we're gonna go ahead and revert to that half guard lever open create a panel of hair to fade into and I will speed up the uh, the open sections because you know it's pretty redundant you know you just want to make sure that you're going all the way from front to back making sure that everything is fed into the blades you know you see me using the brush now now I use the the comb for anything over a two guard 
Now, anything below a two guard, I'm gonna use that brush because it helps lay down the hair a lot nicer than a comb will. And you wanna make sure that you're using that comb to make sure that you get that hair directionalized to go against the grain with the clipper. That is crucial, crucial, crucial. Now, like I said about my client's texture of hair, it was difficult. There was a lot of spots that are more dense than the others. So I do a lot of detail work as you can see me doing here. I'm playing with the lever with that half guard on there and just trying to make sure that we get all these dark spots uh, taken care of, all blended out and just doing the best job we could do, giving my client the best haircut we could possibly give him. That goes for every single client that sits in my chair. Um, but my client in my chair right now, if you guys don't remember from the Vlogmas series, this is just Jaime. Uh, if you want to go back and watch some of those videos, uh, those, that was from the Christmas, the Christmas time, the Vlogmas series. A lot of YouTubers be vlogging for like 30 days straight and it's a task, but I got a lot of good feedback from a lot of my subscribers and I appreciate everybody for, you know, vibing with the content. But you can see here this, uh, we got the guard off of there and we're just, you know, lever playing, trying to get those dark spots with the corner of our blade. Then we're gonna go ahead and get to our one guard lever open, create another panel of hair to fade into. Once we got that uh, panel of hair created, close that lever all the way, flick up, open the lever, flick up, open the lever, flick up until we have that area completely blended out. Now you will see a lot of dark spots in the fade, which was very difficult for me to do. So. I make sure that I detail with my corners. I, I drop down to the half guard and uh, continue detailing with the corners with the half guard on as well to make sure that we get all those dark spots out of there. Detailing your work will set you apart from barbers all around you. Not everybody details, not everybody takes the time to do that, so make sure that you are taking your time to go ahead and do that. Brush, fade, brush, fade, brush, fade. But this system that we're doing is just a foolproof method on how to fade. I personally am one to fade up. I'm not, you know, a big fan of fading down. That way it gets me like very lost. So I will admit that I'm a fade up type of guy. So that's what we're doing with this system. And I've been using this system, you know, ever since I was in, in, in school, you know, so it's, this is something that I, I've constantly gotten better at. I'm not gonna say perfected because nobody is perfect in the game. Don't let Instagram fool you or YouTube. But after we got that one guard, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get that one and a half guard lever open and continue fading up at, up towards that hard part. Making sure we just get another panel of hair to fade into. Keeping everything uh, thorough, keeping everything clean, keeping everything blurry. Then we're going to close the lever with that one and a half guard and start fading up. Now, towards the temple area of my client's hair, you can see the hair is a lot less dense. But when you get towards the occipital bone, it's a lot more, it's a lot darker back there. The hair grows a lot more in that area than towards the front near the temple area. So that is the reason why there's a lot of detail work that needs to be done to make sure that we get a very, very blurry blend. Now, shout out to Jerm Boomin for the beat. Go follow him on Instagram, at Jerm Boomin. You can follow him on YouTube as well. Super, super clean beat. But you see me here lever playing, making sure we get this whole area knocked out. But the, the, the fade is there, the blend is there, it's coming out blurry. We're gonna go ahead and go up to that two guard, and that is gonna be the last guard that I use in my system. Anything above two, anything above a two guard, I do use shears for. So that's a two open. I'm gonna close the blade, start fading up, open the lever slightly, fade up until we have that area completely blended out. Now, things, areas of the hair that I couldn't get to with the corners of my blade or with the guard system, I do eventually do shear over comb. I use a uh, my cutting shears and I also use blending shears to knock out those little areas that I see. But as you can see here, this 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 fade's coming out icy. And we ain't even done yet. We just got started. But uh, I, I appreciate everybody for tuning into this video and uh, watch it. This is a long one, but I will get as much information in this, this video as I can. But you can see we're doing clipper over comb to try to soften up that area. And we're gonna use the two guard open to fade into that clipper over comb around the occipital bone area of my client's head. Now, like I said, I will do the left side. The right side is going to be time-lapsed 
and then I'll show you guys a brief um, overview of bridging both the hair, uh, both sides of the head together in the back. But right here, a little clip over comb work. I got those JRL cutting, uh, cutting combs with my cutting shears. Make sure you brush the hair down so you can go back up against the grain. Now we're using our thinning shears to just kind of essentially point cut little areas that are dark. Super, super, super blurry fade. Yeah, I was really nervous to cut, you know, my, my co-worker's hair for the reason being I'm not usually the one that cuts his hair. So I, I wasn't sure, you know, even how to fade him. The last time I faded him was like four years ago, three, four years ago, something like that. But we are cleaning up around the air, around the ear with our Slimline GTXs. Those are zero gapped as well. Once we go around the ear and uh, on the bottom portion of his haircut with the GTXs, we will use our, our Andis shaver, the rose gold shaver. Now I'm creating a very bald portion first towards the bottom. I'm, I'm making a hard line at the very bottom. And that hard line that I do create, I flick out by holding the shaver uh, pivoted at the bottom and kind of uh, slanted, not touching the entire head. And I'm just flicking out, knocking out that, that uh, harsh line we made with the shaver previously. Now we're gonna go ahead and take off my client's face mask and get to that beard portion. Now, just like you fade up, is the same exact way you're gonna fade down. Lever open uh, to create your first panel. Close the lever, fade. Open the lever slightly, fade. Open the lever slightly, fade so that lever is completely open. Now I got to that half guard lever open, and then we're gonna close the lever with the half guard and start fading little dark areas that we see, blending out the lines that we see. And then I go or go over it with a two guard lever open, and I'm just you know um, just slightly riding over the hair to make sure we just get those little flyaways that are hanging out and about. I'm over directing the back of the the beard line so I can make it crispy on the back end. And you want to make sure that you're combing that hair backwards because if you don't, those hairs will be like just straggling towards the end, and that's not what you want. You want everything to lay down uh, naturally after he washes his face or takes a shower. Make sure that you're getting all those areas and uh, taking care of those little details like that. Next thing we got here is the mustache shaping. I'm just taking it off his lip and making it a little bit thinner on top of the mustache right under the nose. We are going to be doing some color enhancements towards the end of the video, but this is the time lapse portion of the haircut. The right side, we did exactly what we did on the left side on the right side. And we're just making sure that we keep everything symmetrical, keep everything um, uniform on both sides of the head. You don't want one side of your fade to be higher than the other side. So make sure you're doing the same exact steps you do on one side to the other side. Now, on his right side, you can see where the comb over is going to lay, and we'll, we will attack that uh, overhang later on in the video with some shear work. But as you can see there, got the 245 gear in the background, got the Beam Team XL, got the Power Mat, got the Power Clips. 245 stays with the, the latest gear, the latest innovations in the game. They're constantly pushing the industry forward. But um, as you can see here, we're bridging both sides together in the back. The same exact steps you make on the left and the right side, you're gonna do on the on the back end as well. This is the same process, same method that we use to fade up and just bridge everything together. Now, thankfully, my client doesn't have the most uh, difficult acceptable bone, so this was an easy task to to kind of get this area bridged in the back. All the hair is basically the same texture and same density same density on the back so that was easier um, because on the on the sides you have less dense towards the front and more dense towards the back but when we're just fading the back side by itself it's easier because it's the same texture and the same density we're fading all the way up we're going to do some clip over comb work here and just keeping that darkness keeping that drop shape it is a bit higher of a fade, but we are still keeping it dropped in the back to create some some bulk and some darkness towards the ridge.
Now, if you guys are, you know, subscribers already and you pay attention and you watch a lot of the content that I put out, um, the guy uh, that I've done two videos on him, one with a mullet and one taking off the mullet, uh, he's usually my my client in the chair right now, Jaime, his usual barber. So shout out to them. Uh, if you want to follow them, you can go follow my client. I'll leave his Instagram tag at the bottom. And then after that, I'll leave uh, his barber, his usual barber, my other co-workers, uh, Instagram handle as well. So you can go follow them on Instagram. Go show them some love. Go like some of their haircuts. But right now we're saturating the hair, making sure it is all wet, evenly, evenly damp. And we're going to go ahead and tack this shear work. So I'm taking off about a half, or not, I'm sorry, about an inch on the top. We're gonna make a initial guideline right in the center. That center portion of the head is gonna be our guideline to use on the left side and then use on the right side to make sure that we're taking off the same amount all over the top of the head. Now I'm just slowly making my way towards the front through the center and then we're gonna go ahead and pull some hair from the center to the side and use that as a guideline to take off that inch on the left side and the right side. Now after we do all this, I will do cross checking tour, um, later on in this video as well, after this portion. And that's crucial, cross checking is crucial. So what we did to the left side, we're doing to the right side as well. And after we knock out the right side, I will um, blend the top hair to the side hair on the opposite side. And you can see here, we're just using our finger, finger length on the sides to make sure we get that side blended. You don't have much of an overhang. You don't have like a little shelf that's just, you know, hanging over. That's not what you want. You want it to flow together. You want it to be, you know, um, I don't know. You want it to flow together. You want the haircut to have some good flow to it, if that makes sense. Can't think of another word that I was trying to find. But right now we're cross-checking from front to back. So we've, we've moved from the forehead all the way to the back. And we're gonna go ahead and go to the right side move from the forehead to the back, and then move to the left side from the front to the back. And that's how you cross check your hair. That's how you make sure that everything is evenly cut. Now you can see this haircut is coming together nicely. I'm, I'm loving how it's looking. Um, I do apologize. I did not get the front edge up portion with the trimmers in this video. I have no idea how I lost that footage, but you will see after this sheer work, we will jump into the, uh, the, the beard trim. And so the guy filming right now for me, my cameraman, is actually Jaime's usual barber. So like I said, I'll leave his uh, Instagram down below as well. So you guys can go follow him, go follow Jaime, and go follow my boy Lois right there in the background. These guys are all talented barbers. Our team is full of some heavy hitters. We're like the dream team. I know I'm pretty sure that's how everybody feels about their squad too, but I, I'm really proud of these guys and how good they cut and just overall, you know, what they bring to the team. But right here, we're knocking out that under, under portion of the beard. And after we do this, we're gonna go ahead and do some razor work. Make sure we get everything nice and crispy. Using that blade against the grain, against the direction of the hair follicle will get you the baldest um, possible, possible outcome you can get. So we did the vertical bar, we did the top of the hairline, and we'll go ahead and do the beard portion of this. And then we're going to go ahead and do the, the other side after we knock out that hard part as well. Make sure you're using that razor on the hard part to get it as clean as possible, to get it as crisp as possible, to get those little hairs that you couldn't get with the trimmer. I'm gonna go ahead and do the opposite side. Symmetry is key. I'm using that 245 triple cartridge exposed razor. You got some regular derby blades in there. Just the ones you could pick up from Sally's. Uh, the, the green box, nothing too crazy. Does the job with that 245 shave gel. Now after we got everything edged up with the, uh, the razor, we're gonna go ahead and go over it with the Barber Magic Pencil. I got the white color because my client is more lighter skinned. We're just this this uh, Barber Magic pencil is just gonna serve as a barrier for the color that we will lay down, and the color that I'm using is gonna be the 245 
Onyx Black No Drip. That is what I'm using in the compressor that I have. And we're just gonna lay it down uh, nice and natural. You don't want nothing, nothing too dark or nothing, you know, over cosmetic because you want you want the haircut to look as natural as possible. And uh, in my left hand there, you can see I got that Sean Cuts Hair color card. And we're using that to get all the angles, get all the curves, and lay down that color. Shout out to Sean Cuts Hair for coming out with this dope idea. You know, I, a lot of times I was using uh, business cards back in the day to do this and no more wasting business cards. I got a card that you could easily wash off with the alcohol. It's, it's compact, it's convenient. So shout out to Sean Cuts Hair. He's always showing love on Instagram and on YouTube. But um, that Barber Magic Pencil, the way you blend it is by using those uh, the teeth of the trimmer and just etch away at that that uh, Barber Magic Pencil there until it's completely blended. Now I will go over the vertical bars and the beard with the razor to get that, uh, that Magic Pencil completely blended out. And I will brush away a little bit just to get it blended as much as we can. Because it does look a little awkward sometimes when you just got like a super, super white line on your client when they walk out. So you want to make sure you're getting that as blended as possible. But it is coming out nice. Crispy, crispy, crispy. This is the type of work we're looking for. But there's the haircut. It's coming out nice and blurry. Everything is just flowing together. The comb over is flowing with the hard part. It's flowing with the beard. It's flowing with the edge up. But I appreciate everybody for tuning into this tutorial, tuning into this video. I hope that everybody learned something. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on your post notifications. I got more videos in the arsenal. Uh, I got a kid's haircut coming up, so stay tuned for that. Stay locked in. I will be giving away the Slimline GTXs with the 245 power clip that you see in this video. But that'll do it for the cut. There it is. It's it's all there it's all finished up let me give you all a little 360 view of the entire cut all together if you guys like what you see drop me down in the comment section uh what you think of this haircut what you would do better what you learn you know give me some feedback down there let me know what y'all are thinking but uh there's a cut like i said i appreciate everybody for tuning in if you're not following me on instagram at jblends underscore but that'll do it for the cut until next time god bless